Welcome to today's episode of Juice in the Numbers. I'm your host, Joshua Tracy. And I am Corbin Heller. And uh, today is typically our stats episode. It is uh, This is the Thursday edition of Juice in the Numbers. But today we have a lot of things to talk about given the NFL trade deadline, which was this past Tuesday. There were a few people that moved, a few people who stayed that are of note. Uh, there was also... Also on Tuesday, which is the day we're recording this. When the club goes the, up. Uh, the NCAA came out with a new ruling about players getting paid. So we can talk about, we'll be talking about that as well. One thing which we will not be touching on in this episode is the World Series conclusion, which will certainly have happened, whether in six or seven games by the time this episode gets released. But we might have something else for that. Um, so. Stay tuned. Spoiler alert, it was the team you did or perhaps, in fact, did not want to win. Bum, bum, Duh. All right, let's jump into it. Yeah, do you want to start with uh, Kenyon Drake? Drake? <laughs> Kenyon? Fuck, I fucked it up <laughs> even worse. <laughs> yeah, Kenyon Drake. He got traded. Where to? Let's find out. Um, yeah, he got traded to Arizona. Um, of course, this was the first thing on my list, and it's the only one that I don't have in front of me. Uh, but yeah, he's going to be taking over now that um, David Johnson is going on IR, and Chase Edmonds is going to be out for a while. Um, you know, it fits a need. I guess David Johnson is just going to be one of those guys that's just never healthy. Um. He's had, you know, like I think like what one or two full seasons in his career. And I think just literally been, just his rookie year, which is, you know, awful. Um, Kenyon Drake, though, he's hopefully going to be more of a guy than what he showed to be on the Dolphins. Um, I mean, it's just a conditional pick uh, in the sixth round. It can become a fifth round pick. We don't know the specific details on that just yet. I'm sure by Thursday everyone will. So check the internet. Um, but I don't, I don't dislike <laughs> this <laughs> trade at all. I mean, yeah, I actually we'll don't talk... know David Johnson got hurt. What did he get hurt with? Everything. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so he has super AIDS. But I mean, <laughs> I, I like this pick for both teams. It keeps uh, Arizona kind of uh, dynamic on offense, not as much as it would be with David Johnson there, obviously. But Kenyon Drake is no slouch, uh, and then the Dolphins get a nice late round pick out of it. So you can't really complain. We'll talk about it later, how they are basically just buying picks. Um, but it's exactly what they're trying to do. So, yeah, um, maybe being on a new team will give him a renewed will to live since Miami is a uh, black hole of that. They mm -hmm. seemingly no one wants to play there, which I don't blame them for <laughs> people already been traded since the season started if not earlier um Kenyon drake thus far into the season has played in six games yet somehow only started too which i don't know how that works um since he is like their main running back uh he has 47 rushes for 174 yards zero touchdowns um, which is mind-blowing <laughs> yeah 3.7 yards I, per attempt 20, gonna... 29 yards per game that's really bad Really, wow. really, really bad. Uh, he has um, been more of a yeah. receiving threat this year. 33 targets for 174 yards as well. So is the exact amount, same amount of uh, receiving yards as he does rushing yards. Um, and uh, he's also averaging, so yeah, 29 yards per game on that. So he's averaging as a, as a cumulative total of, of 58 yards per game. It's still not fucking great, but whatever. Yeah, uh, for all of you fantasy fans, he, he is averaging 5.5 yards per game, uh, which ranks him 49th among running backs, and has been sitting on my bench the entire season, just waiting for him to decide to come to reality. He has total for the year, 32.8 fantasy points. Oh, it's so bad. That's just awful. Yeah, zero touchdowns and two fumbles. Ugh. I guarantee you he's going to score two touchdowns in his first game. Actually, uh, he plays the 49ers. So in his second game, he's going to score two touchdowns. 
So just just for, 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 just for fun, uh, he has 174 174 rushing yards. He has 83 of those come from uh, before contact, 91 after contact, uh, four broken tackles. Um, nothing exciting, really. This is this seems like someone who got moved because Miami didn't need him and Arizona needed somebody. Right, like in the grand scheme of things, I know people know him because of fantasy. This is not a major trade. Yeah, no, this is uh this would have been a much bigger deal last year. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh do you want to stick with the Dolphins though and just go through all of their trash on here? Uh yes. All right. So Xavier Howard was placed on IR today after uh leaving Monday night Steelers game uh with an injury. I heard uh, what the injury is. Do you want to hear about it? Yeah, absolutely. His feelings are hurt. Yeah. He He's just doesn't sad. have the will to live anymore. <laughs> He's just a grumpy guy. <laughs> the first person to be put on the IR by being broken by a team. Yeah, yeah. Broken spirit. No, no other player the team did this. Oh, man. Yeah, so he's basically the only good player left on the Dolphins. Um, so this got me thinking, who do the Dolphins have left that are like actual real-life good players? Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick every now and then, but definitely not this year. Right. Um, so, Josh Rosen, if this was 18 months ago. Fair uh, enough. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is Cameron Wake still alive? Cameron Wake is alive, but doesn't play for this team anymore. That's he got a shame. to the Titans. Yeah, I mean, if... I mean, Devonta, Devontae Parker was, you know, a bust. He's probably the biggest star that they have on offense right now, if you don't want to count Preston Williams, who's uh, as good as he's been and basically has been their top target. He's still an undrafted rookie. Their offensive line is absolute garbage. As much as I love Mike Kosicki, he has not played well in the NFL by any means. Ryan Fitzpatrick and Josh Rosen. Not exactly, you know, star quarterbacks at the moment. Mark Walton, a uh, guy out of Miami, uh, the U, uh, got cut by the Bengals of all teams, uh, had some issues. He's basically their only serviceable running back. I mean, there's just not much. They got some guys on defense, um, Rashad Jones, uh, Bobby McCain, and then they have, uh, who's the guy from Dallas? Taco Charlton that they have. Um, other than that, you know, Devon Godshow is pretty good. Christian Wilkins is super underperforming uh, for being a first-round pick. Raekwon McMillan's – I actually don't know how he's doing. I just really like him from uh, college. Um, yeah, this is just like an awful team all around. I know we joke about like, oh, could Alabama beat one of these teams? I'm sure Ohio State could beat this team in maybe like two years i really do like if these guys stayed this this was the same team and ohio state just got two years older i think ohio state could beat this team no questions asked ah this is a sad team it is Um, this is a really sad team i'm i'm looking through it trying to fit you know who has uh the fourth most rushing yards on the team uh is it ryan fitzpatrick yeah yeah. yeah, 49. Uh, not actual, exactly. Uh, he has more than actual. Uh, uh, oh, no, that's I'm sorry. I misread um, QB for RB for Josh Rosen. Why is it lowercase? Um, this is just so sad. It's, it's, it's a very depressing team all around. And it's not like they're hiding how much they want to be a bad team, at least as far as the front office is concerned. Do you know who Kellen Balazs is? Kalen Balaj, he's, he's a running back from Arizona State. Uh, now, I'm going to read you his stat line so far this that, season. But... You ready? Yeah. All right, so he's played in, in seven games. He mm-hmm. has 28 attempts for 51 yards. Not good. 1.8 yards per attempt. He's averaging 7.3 yards per game. And yet, he has the most rushing touchdowns on the team with two. How many his drops longest... does he have? Hey, hold on real quick. His longest run of the season, you may ask. Oh, six. Uh, six yards. <laughs> oh, that's really bad. 
Uh, receiving, he has 11 targets for four receptions, 40 yards, zero touchdowns. Um, I don't see oh, I'm just in regular rushing and receiving. Let me check advanced rushing and receiving for him. I feel I like it's not going to be that high because they might have not like logged them in as drops, but I've never seen a running back that incapable of catching a pass. Uh, he oh wow three <laughs> he has three yeah. drops three drops on and four receptions yikes yeah he has a twenty seven point three drop percent which is uh, oh, that's so a, that's a bad. lot of drops that's so bad all right real quick who do you think has more drops Kalen Balage or uh, Julian Edelman Kalen Balage all right I'm pulling out Julian Edelman's page now because I I. Just I would be surprised if Edelman had more than like one or two drops. All right. Julian Edelman has where are your drops? Oh, he has six. Oh, he's failing. How yeah. many what's his rate though? Seven point six percent. Okay, so you know, exactly a quarter of what uh Kalen Palash is. Yeah. Oof. Dude, dude's built like a tank. Just can't play football. Yeah, yeah. Neither can tanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Miami is selling out. They are buying as many fucking draft picks as they can. Uh, this reminded me of back in the day when uh, Cleveland paid like eighteen million dollars for a second round pick. Can you look yeah, up Brock Lobster? Yeah, can you look up that Cleveland Browns trade with, I think, the Texans, please? Yes, give me one second. Well, I look up the Dolphins draft picks. Um, Here we go. So for 2020 draft picks, why in the world would this be a four-page article? You are absolutely insane. Is there no website that does this? This is something that normally we would do before the episode, but obviously us. We're just going to wing it and see what happens. Um, yeah, so here we go. As of August 31st, which is not updated, uh, they have three first-round picks. Well, all right, they have two first-round picks, but they – fuck it. Josh, please cut this out of the episode. This is the I, worst fucking thing we've ever done. <laughs> I'm not going to, but while, while, while you're gathering oh, yourself, God. I can tell you what the, what the trade was. Please do. <laughs> so the Texans sent to the Browns – uh, Brock Osweiler, yeah, a 2018. This trade happened in 2018, 2017. It was before uh, the draft. 2017. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it must be 2017 because I should have just kept reading the sentence. Um, they sent a 2018 second round pick, a 2017 sixth round pick, and Houston received um 10 million dollars in uh. Oh, sorry. No, no. They, they they took the full contract off the book, so they it, they took all sixteen million of Oswald's contract. Cleveland did, and Cleveland sent over a twenty seventeen fourth round pick. Um, so yeah. they moved two back, two rounds back, moving from four to six in exchange for getting Brock Osweiler and getting a second round pick. That's how yes. bad his contract was. <laughs> and sixteen million and giving up sixteen million dollars. And everyone's initial thought was, what the fuck just happened? Like, are you serious? And then people started to realize, oh my God, they literally just bought a draft pick. Like straight up, this is as close as anyone's ever gonna get to paying a team straight up for draft capital. Yeah. Um and then, for anyone who's unaware of the story, they cut Brock Osweiler in um, training camp. Or preseason. I forget which one. Then he played uh, for the Dolphins, Does it right? really matter? Yeah. He played for a couple teams. Yeah, he tried to anyway. Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, so, yeah. so, do you Dolphins. want to keep talking about the, the Dolphins in regards to Aqib Tlaib? Yeah, so they traded for Aqib Tlaib. Um, he is on IR, right? I thought he was, but now you've put doubt into my mind. So you could look I, that up. I thought he was too, which is why this trade confused me so much. Yeah, so basically they traded Aqib Talib and a fifth round pick. This is the Rams. 
in exchange for like a conditional sixth, seventh round pick? A future seventh rounder. They traded okay. the 2020 fifth round for a future seventh round. I guess it doesn't classify the year yet, which is weird, but I, it's whatever. probably an it's probably an option thing. Ah, uh, okay. I could see that. Where like uh either conditionally or not, it's either this year or next year, or it's like, all right, we'll take this year's this looks like a good good enough. Akeem Talib is on injured reserve. He was designated due to injured ribs and is without a timetable for recovery. Yeah, so he's definitely not coming back this year because why would I don't he? think he would want to, honestly. Um, so this is basically the same deal where they are just taking him off the Rams books in exchange for getting a pick. Granted, it's a you know, lot less than a second round pick, but at the same time, they're just buying as much capital as they can. Three first round picks next year, uh, one of the Texans and one of the Steelers, as well as the Texans second round pick, as well as their own. So I have pieced myself together quite nicely since that little, I don't want to say a big word. Fuck it up. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, real quick, because I'm curious, um, because I, I, I don't know about NFL contracts in, in the same way as I know about MLB contracts, is if someone lands on IR, is the team still liable for the contract? Because in MLB, um, in teams will teams will insure contracts so that the contract still goes against their total spending, but they can have an insurance company pay the contract so the team isn't actually taking that money um, out of their own coffers. Um, I don't know specifically whether they have insurance for that, but the team is still responsible for paying, you know, uh, the guaranteed money for that contract. Yeah, um, like to leave still going to get whatever. Because that's what just seems so confusing from the Rams perspective is because if the contracts insured like for, for baseball, I mean, not that they, it, all right. The Yankees still have Jacoby Ellsbury. The mm. reason they still have Jacoby Ellsbury is because he's hurt. <clears throat> and the reason they want that is that not necessarily want, but the reason they're okay with that is that they can keep him and have uh, his contract absolutely paid for. Whereas if they had just cut him, they'd have to pay his what uh, the remaining money on his contract without it getting insured. It comes straight from their own personal dollars. Whereas keeping him and letting insurance pay for it lets uh, his contract just wear on by, but the money doesn't come out from their coffers. Mm-hmm. And I have to assume the NFL is not that way because otherwise the Rams just moved Aqib Tlaib um for what uh, um cap space so looking at there's only 4.2 million dollars left on his contract so i can't even justify right. that so end. that so that 4.2 million was for all of this season um basically by trading him at this point they still have 3.7 million uh on their cap as a dead hit but they're basically freeing up uh you know basically $500,000 in both cap space and real cash spending. So, uh, yeah, so they're basically just saying, we'll fucking pay you or pay us a million dollars, half a million dollars, and you can have our fifth round pick in exchange for a sixth or seventh, whatever it was. Ah, very strange. Yeah. I don't know enough about like the very nitty gritty details of, uh, salary cap manipulation uh like the gms do so i'm assuming that was the only detail that i could get from that so yeah, yeah okay i i i'm going to assume that they are not um insured only because it's the only way this yeah. makes sense i've never heard of it being that way so i just never would assume that they would be all right so we got all of the dolphin stuff out of the way. Would you like to talk about the Jets for a moment with uh, Leonard Williams? And well, I guess I, we could talk about all the shit that went down today. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep it moving with Leonard Williams. Do you want to hear my impression first, or do you want to at all? Absolutely. No, I want to hear yours first. All right. So Leonard Williams got sent to the Giants. The first ever trade between the New York Jets and the New York Giants. I actually thought it was Snacks Harrison a couple years ago, but that was a free agency thing that I just forgot about. Um. The Jets 
send to the Giants, Josh Leonard Williams, and the Giants send to the Jets a 2020 third round pick and a 2021 conditional fifth round pick. Uh, I think the condition is whether or not the Giants re-sign Leonard Williams to a, an extension. I, I'm so I'm sad a little bit because Leonard Williams always seemed like a really good dude, but I also am kind of happy because. He has been a point of contention in Jets fandom for the last two, three seasons. At when, every year after his rookie year, because he never really produced anything. He hasn't been good on pressure. He hasn't been getting sacks. He, he's been okay stopping the run, but he hasn't been really good at it. He's been, by and large, uh, okay. And it comes with a lot of baggage with Jets fans because you know we spent a first round pick on him and then we uh cut Muhammad Wilkerson because we had Leonard Williams and Muhammad Wilkerson was causing trouble and it's, he seemed redundant so to speak so the fact that they felt so comfortable moving on from him really speaks to how little they thought of him which I think is pretty accurate based on how he's played yeah looking uh, at his stats right now he has 17 sacks in 71 career games which is not great even as a defensive tackle. Um, he's very much underperformed his draft slot, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And with a payday coming up soon, they did the right thing by uh, trying to get some value out of him before his time ended here in a different way. So, And boy, did they get some good uh, value for him. Yeah, I am shocked at the Giants' end of this. Dave Gettleman is so bad at his job. Um, <laughs> also, I thought it was funny because Pete texted me, and he was like, good thing uh, I'm happy the Giants got an edge rusher. And I'm like, oh, buddy. No, 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 I no. I have some bad news for you. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not what he does. <laughs> it just it amazes me with how much they already have invested in their defensive line very much their strongest position outside of running back. What are you doing? They have Dalvin Tomlinson. They have Dexter Lawrence. They have BJ Hill as their starters. Now they're backing up Dalvin Tomlinson with Leonard Williams, who is, I assume he's a free agent after this year because they didn't sign him to an extension. Um, This is, I think, his option year. Yeah. I think, I think this is his, yeah, because this is his fifth year in the league. So this must have been his team option year. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, he would be. What free are you doing? Team. Yeah. What are you, what are you doing? You're paying a third and a fifth, we said it was for yes, a, a third, a 2023 and a 2021 conditional fifth. Right. Um, I don't know what the Giants are doing. This is absolutely Clearly. ridiculous. I think it's I very talking, clear that the I was Giants talking, are. I think it's very clear that the Giants are going to try to transition Leonard Williams to O line. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> now that what, would be yeah. something. Yeah, they're going to replace Nate Solder with Leonard Williams. Ah, oh, fuck. Can't be worse than Eric Flowers. Oh, is he still in football or is he gone now? Is he still uh, Jackson? He's floating around somewhere. I don't know specifically where. I could look it up, though. We have the internet. Do we care that much, though? It's Eric Flowers. I kind of do. He's on the Redskins. That's where I, I thought he was. Ah, uh, where all people go to die. <laughs> yes. I, I was talking with a with a buddy the other day, and you know, I was like, "Well, oh, those Nationals fans are like, or the city of DC seems really into this uh, this World Series." You know, it's nice. Got you know, they haven't had him so long, and I go, "Yeah." Also, what else do they have? They can't root for the Redskins right now. <laughs> you know, like. Right. This is all they have to keep them going through the month of October, so... They can wait for Dan Snyder to make more money. Uh, who doesn't? I, mean, <laughs> I pray every <laughs> night he gets richer. Uh, all right, do you want to talk about uh, the Redskins then, since we're on the topic with well, Trent Williams? Let, let's finish off the AFC East uh, okay. here and talk about Michael Bennett. Cool, cool, cool. Tell me so about he, Michael Bennett. He got traded from the New England Patriots. No, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, from the Patriots to the Cowboys, the Cowboys send over a seventh round, a 2021 seventh round pick, which is the Patriots say, way of saying, please take this. I don't want him. 
it's one of those things where it's like it's almost an inside joke where it's like a conditional seventh round pick is worth literally nothing. We would rather get like a bag of balls or for you to fill our vending machine for a season. I mean, the yeah. dude's a, a dude's a thirty three year old edge rusher who's kind of not really been all that uh, spectacular in New England. I mean, he had nine sacks last year with the Eagles. He had two and a half in six games this year, only started one game, and only has five tackles uh, in all. He's basically just kind of turned into a situational pass rusher for New England, and that defense is so deep that I think this is just Bill Belichick saying, I mean, you're worth a couple snaps per game, but that seventh rounder could be anything. It could literally be Tom Brady. So. Yeah, and at that point, they basically just traded Mr. Irrelevant because the Patriots' odds of being the final pick in the draft are always very high. Right. Uh, uh, yes. Dallas is, Can... Dallas is... Oh, yeah, no, they would send the pick. So Wait, yeah. no, they're getting Dallas's pick. I was right the first oh, time. Oh, no, you're right. You're right. They're getting Dallas's pick. Oh, in which case, I hope they pick very high. Um, <laughs> yeah, just for reference, Michael Bennett's stats, um, he has only started one game this year. He has two and a half sacks, uh, five com- combined tackles, four solo tackles, one assisted, um, three tackles for lost, and four QB hits, which is a not just a humongous step back from what he was last season, but just like you said already, not really needed on a stout defensively New England team, so... Yeah, this is uh, the Cowboys desperately trying, and um, the uh, Patriots just not giving a shit. <laughs> yeah, so the Washington Redskins then, because I don't want to talk about the Patriots anymore. Fair. Uh, Trent Williams decided to end his holdout. Uh, I believe he would have had to uh, before week 10 uh, in order to basically have this year count towards his contract otherwise the Redskins could just roll it over to next year um at the same time he's missed eight weeks so far nine weeks so far is he gonna be able to come back and start for the Redskins on Sunday probably not but are the Redskins gonna force him to anyway probably um, it's nice to have him back. I'm upset they didn't get traded to a team that actually would value having Trent Williams on their team. Um, so it's not going to affect the outcome of the Redskins season in really any meaningful way. Should help out Dwayne Haskins when they eventually start starting him uh, full time. So some good, some meh. Yeah, uh, it sounds like a pretty shitty year for Trent Richardson as he uh, he went from hoping to get a contract to not getting it and having to play football for the Redskins. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, it's not too great. Uh, so moving on, we got the Denver Broncos next. Joe Flacco's out. He's done for the season. Might have something to do with the fact that he had some choice words to say to the coaching staff, although I'm sure he actually is hurt and he didn't get beat up by the coaches. Uh, which puts Brandon Allen as the starter for the Broncos, essentially for the rest of the year. Um, you might remember him. He played for Jacksonville for a little bit. Didn't do too great. Uh, and is now backing up uh, Iron Dick Joe Flacco. The big question is, are they going to activate rookie quarterback Drew Locke uh, week 11 to see if he could make it back? Uh, they've said that his thumb injury is fully healed. Uh, he hasn't started practicing yet, though, so... Just one of those things for them to look for. Uh, I have nothing to contribute. I I do, real quick, I know it's not on our list, but I wanted to talk for a moment about Jalen Ramsey, if I might. Yeah, go for it. So, we had talked about his um, time in Jacksonville heading into his uh, Los Angeles tenure. And uh, I, I want to just compare his stats for a moment uh, in the three games he's played in Jacksonville now that he's played uh, two in Los Angeles. So maybe this would have been best saved for la- next week. But fuck it, whatever. 
Um, so in three games with Jacksonville, he had a 62.5 completion percent allowed uh, for 147 yards. That's 9.8 yards per completion, 6.1 yards per target, a touchdown allowed, a 93.6 QB rating allowed. Um, was not pretty. No, uh, not really. Zero missed tackles, which is nice. But, uh, <laughs> we, I know we talked about that before. Yeah, but it it was not pretty. Would you like to hear his Rams stats? I would love to. All right, he has been uh, targeted targeted thirteen times and has allowed ten completions for a seventy six point nine percent completion percentage, one hundred fifty eight yards, which is in fewer games more yards than he allowed in Jacksonville. 15.8 yards per completion, 12.2 yards per target, literally double what he allowed in Jacksonville, a 116.8 QB rating against, uh, and, and two missed tackles, 16.7% missed tackle percent. Oof. God. Rough. Yeah, that's really bad. Granted, two games. Is what it is. A lot of yeah, a lot of football left to be played in this season. You know, but, new defense, new you know, new new coach. So, well, there's excuses to be had if you want to take some excuses. But at the um, same time, when you yeah. when you when you trade for the All Pro cornerback, you do not expect this. No, you don't. Uh, and it's actually kind of funny, but he's definitely made some good plays, uh, especially in the first game he played with them. Uh, I remember seeing those highlights. So. Hopefully, he still works out in the end. Yeah, I mean, I'm not rooting against him because I have no reason to. Um, but I did find that to be fascinating because I, was, I wanted to check up on him since we did spend a decent amount of time talking about him uh, when the trade actually happened. So, yeah. Yeah. There's one last thing that we could talk about before going into the NCAA. The Red Rifle has been benched, people. Andy Dalton is the starter no longer. Ryan Finley is going to start for them. And as much as I want to have this be huge news, it's just kind of like, yeah, all right. We kind of figured that was going to come at some point. It's not like he's going to be there any longer as a starter after this year. So, sure. And it kind of is. I mean, Ryan Finley is never going to be the guy. And if he is, it's going to be for whatever games he can finish up this season. Um, so yeah, I guess it's just the Cincinnati Bengals finally realizing, or not finally realizing, but finally acting on the idea that Andy Dalton is the Mendoza line. I swear that franchise is the slowest moving franchise. (laughs) It took him so long to do with Fantas Perfect. It took him so long to do with Marvin Lewis. It took him so long to do with Andy. Oh my God. Yeah. And then, uh, fuck, what's. I am already forgetting his name. Uh, Hugh Jackson, bringing Hugh Jackson back to coach for them. That was the icing on the cake. I just don't get how one franchise can be so bad. I have nothing against their coach, Zach Taylor, but he was hired because he's friends with Sean McVay, and that is also hilarious. (laughs) You know, like... The Reds suck right now, but they have a semblance of what they're trying to do. There's a plan with the Reds for the other Cincinnati team. There's no plan with the with the with the uh, Bengals. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they have no okay. idea. I I'm hundred something... percent serious, Corwin. Where I when I say that if if you were instated as the GM of the Cincinnati Bengals, they would certainly be no worse. Because, oh, my God, the fact that they're slow. It's one thing, ladies and gentlemen, it's one thing if as a GM or decision making person within a sports team to make a decision quickly and be wrong than to make the right decision anywhere between eight to 18 months too fucking late, because at least you can learn something quickly from a fast made decision, whereas you learn nothing for making the right decision way too fucking late. And that's been the M.O. of the Bengals for the last fucking 15 years. You know what they kind of remind me of? Like Tell people me. who never, who just sit in the left-hand lane on the highway. Oh. They just sit there. They know their exit's coming out, but they're not getting over because we know what we're doing is correct. Not only that, they're they're getting getting passed in the right lane. They're getting passed in the right lane. And they're like, oh, those people are 
driving like idiot. savages. Yeah. Absolute <laughs> idiot. This is how it should be done. Oh shit, there's my exit. Screech. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Looks like Andy Dalton wasn't the guy. Let's bench him for Ryan Finley. <laughs> and then go shotgun some skyline chili. At, at least when uh the Giants benched Eli for Geno Smith, it was like there was like a one percent you know prob- percent probability there that you were like maybe this is Gino's shot it ended the first time he threw the ball but there was still that hope before he did this is just like ryan finley what's the point of this like for real come on it's impressive at some point it's just genuinely impressive <laughs> i don't mind as someone who's a fan of the steelers in that division I thought the Steelers could bottom out this year if, you know, everything kept going poorly. And deep down, I knew that was never going to be true because the Bengals were still there to hold down the fort. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing how no matter how bad or good the Steelers are, the Bengals are always worse. Remember that one year they went 14-2? and Yeah, and then lost in the first round. Yeah. That was a good year. <laughs> well, it was a good conclusion to a weird year. Oh, absolutely. So now, while we're on the topic, who is the uh, bright young quarterback that they're going to draft first or second overall that career they are going to end? Um. Well, the, the last quarterback was redheaded, so I'm going to say some other weird genetic person. Like, maybe he's too short. Maybe he's weirdly tall. Two is left-handed. That's perfect. Uh, no, two is too good. They won't do that. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> uh, you know what? They're probably not. The, you know what they're gonna do? They're not gonna draft a quarterback in the first round. They're gonna. They're gonna. They're, take... gonna they're gonna take like another wide receiver. Yeah, they're gonna take Jerry <laughs> Judy and be like, "This is our AJ Green replacement." And it's gonna be like, well, you know, like whoever we end up putting in a quarterback needs good pieces around them, so we're just trying to set them up for success. And then it's like, yeah, yeah but you still have no quarterback. You're just wasting a year, like. <laughs> The drafts once a year. There's 16 games in between then. Maybe more if you're good. Like, oh, I, man. I really hope that it's Justin Herbert so that they have, like, the nicest, most genuine quarterback that, like, the fans will love. And then the second things get hot or, like, the second he starts playing for a team that's that garbage, he's going to crumple because everyone talks about how uh, poor his mental game is and then they are just left with sadness for the next 10 years no offense to justin herbert i don't wish that upon you but as someone who hates the Bengals, that would be fucking funny yeah i uh if you could move the Bengals anywhere where would you move um what's the sh- oh i know <laughs> i thought to myself what's the shittiest state i know ohio Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, you know what's funny? My first thought was Columbus just for spite. <laughs> so that they could be the second best team in that very small town. Yeah, right? Actually, and since, small and town, Cincinnati but would know whatever. the pain of their team moving, but have it be so close that there'd be a lot of overlap. <laughs> let's let's call up this guy, Roger Goodell. Let's, let's get him on the line. <laughs> uh, Roger, you're here. on the line. Uh, what? There's no cameras here. Uh, did you guys see me run that 40 in the office <laughs> last year? I stepped on a staple. <laughs> all, right, all right. How about this? How about how about if um if you put the, the Bengals in uh, Rochester, New York? <laughs> oh, yes. Could we name them the Factory of Sadness? Oh, or we could put them Rochester. in Syracuse and have them be less popular than all the college teams. So you're familiar with the Rochester Institute of Technology, right? Yes. The Rochester Institute of Sadness. I'm, a, I'm all about it. For all the kids that flunk out of RIT, they can go play for the Bengals. On-field result will be similar. I think the Bengals should move to a really stupid town like Grand Rapids, Michigan. Something that like <laughs> normally wouldn't get a team but like the nfl is going to put it there to be like see even this sad sack city couldn't do it like um move him to ann arbor and make him make jim harbaugh coach him <laughs> move him to omaha fuck it those nebraskan folks would totally do that shit uh yeah i guess it's not like the corn huskers are doing very well yo i'm looking at a map and i just realized that like right now that sioux city and sioux falls are two different places really yeah Damn, okay. 
<laughs> Gonna throw up I in see South you, Dakota. South Dakota. <laughs> they could be the South Dakota Rushmores. I actually wouldn't even be mad at that name. That'd be pretty cool. What is it? Fast Times at Ridgemont Rushmore. High? Ridgemont High? Damn. Thought yeah. that would have been a good one. Yeah, that's okay. All right. You want to talk about the NCAA? NCAA assholes? Let's do it. And the NCAA. Ah, ah. All right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you Why? want to fill the people in? <laughs> yeah. So the NCAA announced today that they are essentially going to allow players to make money off of their likeness as long as they maintain the idea that, you know, they're still going to be student athletes and fall under those student athlete confines. Um, so basically what it comes down to is if someone wants to pay a player for them to do something, they can do so, but they can't pay a player for just being a player. So this doesn't mean Alabama is going to be able to pay, you know, $100,000 to a kid to make them come there. Um, That's still illegal. It's still going to happen, but it's illegal still. But basically, hey, if Trevor Lawrence wants to go out and have a QB camp over the summer that he runs himself, he could have kids pay him for it. Or if they want to have the NCAA video game back and they're like, all right, kids, we're going to put you in this game because... People want to play you, and people love this fucking game. Here's some money for it. And the NCAA will have to be like, all right, you did something. You provided a good or a service. They're allowed to pay you. So no more slave labor with the NCAA, and people are freaking the fuck out about it. Yeah, um, including one Richard Burr, (laughs) senator from... North Carolina, uh, which tripped me the fuck up when you sent me that article, <laughs> and I saw that the other senator from North Carolina was the one who was like, "Let's do this shit," right? It was uh, where is it? Mark Walker. Yeah, Mark Walker. So, to, oh, House of Representative, not a senator, but still, like, how nuts is that? That the state of the state of North Carolina is so divided on what happens in California. Um, so. First, off, first things first, this is great. This is really great. Uh, I think this is a really great way of handling it, too, because chances are most players will receive a level of benefit from it, you know, despite the fact that they're not going to be getting paid from their school. They'll, uh, if you appear in the NCAA football game, like which they already said is going to be back in production, uh, like I think I heard that today. Then, uh, so basically, they said that they were going to start the process with their lawyers, but they obviously can't just start making the game, you know, right, right, thank anytime you. That's, that's better in the immediate future, yeah. Then, just via that, and I think also they're going to try to find more opportunities for players' faces and likenesses to be put about, which again means that a lot of players will start receiving some benefit for all of the many, many hours of hard work that they put into this. Um, I haven't heard anything too negative outside of the opinions of one Richard Burr, who has stated, let me see if I can find it real quick. I love I it have out. it in front of me. I have it as well. If college athletes are going to make money off their likenesses while in school, comma, their scholarships should be treated like income. I'll be introducing legislation that subjects scholarships given to athletes who choose to quote cash in to income taxes. Now. Corwin, before I go off on a rant, what do you make of this? Sheer who, who the fuck is this helping? Right? What, what is this for? You're going to make fucking a couple grand off of a couple students for taking money like normal employees of a normal company and then fucking make them pay taxes on their scholarships? How much money are you like feasibly going to be able to get from student scholarship taxes to be able to make up for the fact that everyone's going to fucking hate you for taxing student scholarships? Plus it's the fact so that they outrageous. will be paying income tax on the income they get right. when they get paid. Oh, God, it's insane. This type of retaliatory taxation is typically done as a, as a means of saying we don't want more of this to happen. So your income taxes are a result of necessity. 
but things like excise taxes or sin taxes where it's like, all right, we're going to tax, we're going to specifically go after nicotine products or we're specifically going to go after alcohol products. That's to say that like, you know, you can still do it, but we don't want you to do it uh, so much. We want you to be cognizant of how much you're doing it um, in order to achieve a certain desired benefit. In this case, the only thing you could really say, the message that this, the only message that this could be sending is we don't want people, students, to either A, go to college or B, play sports while they're there because you are going to, under all rational thought, have to assume that every single athlete going to college is going to try to get paid. You know why? Because they fucking should. Because they absolutely fucking should. And you're telling them, hey, you know that thing you're really good at? That thing that, that you've been working your whole life at? That that in school, Ar- that's individual for you? I don't want you to take money for that. The greatest strength that you as an individual have at being able to make a successful career with your life. Take that. And throw out the fucking window. Oh, yeah, but you see Jimmy over there who who spent his whole life uh, looking at rocks? Yeah, he's going to get a great internship at at the geologist factory, and he's going to be able to make money while at college. But you, you, Dwayne, you you can't, even though you spend every single free minute of your goddamn life running wind sprints out with your dad, you're not going to be able to get any money because that's not as meaningful as looking at rocks. It's fucking stupid. It's so why would you be so just mean? Let's just I set see. aside the fact that he's objectively wrong about what this would this would um I don't even mean. think it's object like a dick. It's just it I don't even know how you could argue that this isn't wrong, both ethically and politically. And economically. If he also thinks that that any of these athletes would be paying taxes to begin with if they put this shit in yo the ncaa would immediately start fighting this in some way because what happens to get it paid what happens if you're a 17 year old freshman athlete coming in and all of a sudden you have to pay taxes on a scholarship that you just got even though you are not old enough to pay taxes well imagine imagine this imagine you're a broke inner city kid your parents have negative seventy five thousand dollars to their name and the only way you got to go to college in the first place is via your scholarship and now they're saying they want to tax your fifty thousand dollar per year tuition as fifty thousand dollars of income per year which is going to be like after you include um i don't know if it's going to count as a gift or they're going to count as income so let's just be liberal or uh, conservative here and call it fifteen percent on fifty thousand dollars per some uh, per year, and you're what's where's that money going to come from? Congratulations, not, you've just you just you right. just exhibited the demise of college sports. And what gets me the most is that there's no way that the money that ninety nine percent of these student athletes are going to be getting is going to be more than the amount this tax would be on that scholarship. Like oh, it's no not. It's not like these kids, you know, outside of major basketball and football schools, you know, power five conferences, really just the three big conferences in each. They're going to be making, you know, a couple hundred bucks on the side, you know, maybe over the summer or, you know, selling fucking T-shirts with their face on it or some stupid thing that college students do to make money. It's just it's ridiculous. Yeah, you think we'll see maybe a few athletes doing commercials? Oh, for sure. I wasn't sure if that would be allowed. 100%. Yeah, okay. I cool. don't see why it wouldn't be because it doesn't affect their academic status at all. And it is their likeness, obviously. So do you want me to go through the bullet points uh, for the rules that they're crafting this around of? Oh, I would love that. Cool. So in the press release released today... The NCAA offered a framework for the crafting of the new rules. Uh, I think there's like eight of them here. I'm just going to read through them all. Assure student athletes are treated similarly to non-athlete students unless a compelling reason exists to differentiate. Maintain the priorities of education and the collegiate experience to provide opportunities for student-athlete success. Ensure rules are transparent 
focused and enforceable and facilitate fair and balanced competition. Make clear the distinction between collegiate and professional opportunities. Make clear that the compensation for athletic performance or participation is impermissible. Reaffirm that student athletes are students first and not employees of the university. Enhance principles of diversity, inclusion, and gender equality, and protect the recruiting environment and prohibit inducements. Induct I don't know that word. To select, remain at, or transfer to. It it's it's not spelled like an indictment though. How's it spelled? I I'm gonna Google it because I'm gonna sound really fucking stupid when I see how this word is supposed to be pronounced. Um, inducement. Inducements. Yeah. I don't even. I don't. Okay. It is a noun, a thing that persuades or influences someone to do something. I genuinely, in the twenty-two years that I've been alive, and all five years of college that I've gone through, have never seen that word. <laughs> Neither have I. <laughs> uh, NCAA just making this shit up now. I know, right? You want to know the biggest takeaway I got from reading that? Yes, that's exactly what I was going to ask. I can fucking speak when it's in front of me. I just cannot form original thought on the go. <laughs> wow. Um, but I don't see anything here that is genuinely unfair to me. Like all of these are very common sense, very straight to the point. And when you look at it, it's like, yeah, this is everything we expected them to want to do. It's not holding anyone back in any serious way. I mean, granted, we won't see how these are uh, implemented when this uh, goes into effect. But at this point, the day of its release, this looks really great. Yeah, this looks super promising. Um, yeah, because as, as you said, it, if you aren't a star athlete in college, chances are you know that. Mm -hmm. And you're probably taking yeah. your academic no, and you, and to be to be real, you're probably taking your academics pretty seriously, because you know if you're if you're like a right guard and like you're okay and you know you're not going to get drafted, at least if you do get drafted, it like maybe in the sixth seventh round, and it's like, eh, and you're like you know in the business school getting your accounting degree, like you'll probably take your accounting classes relatively seriously and try to be ready in the event you don't get drafted or don't want to go to the NFL by your four years and chances are you won't be receiving a ton of money um on the side from from this new rule so you will be getting a lot of value out of just getting the tuition but if you're somebody that's expecting to go to the draft and get drafted and become an nfl prospect and and you're you have been told that in order for you to go to the nfl you have to go to college by the nfl rules you have to do two years the tuition's not going to mean as much to you because for one thing you're not taking the tuition or the the, the coursework as seriously because of the structure that got put in, in before you and in the event that things go sour and you made a poor choice well now you have something to fall back on because it wasn't going to be your academics not by any fault of your own it won't be your academics but now you'll have hey if you're a really good wide receiver you just didn't get drafted you went to too small of a school too weird of a school it wasn't it was a wide receiver stack draft class whatever but you did like had really good jersey sales you had really good video game sales you're prominently featured whatever now you'll have something to be like this is something else i can build on now and that's going to be a difference maker for a lot of players and a, a lot, lot of people. people who like video games yes <laughs> uh i'm really excited once people are able to dig deep into this uh really get a really nice explanation for what this all means in a practical sense. I mean, I know everything looks great on paper, but practically, how is this going to work? What are the hidden factors that we can't see now that are going to really put a cog in this because it's Mark Emery, it's the NCAA. It's going to be shitty. We just don't know what that is going to be yet. So, You know what I'm really excited for? What? I'm really excited for uh, UNC Chapel Hill to uh, really just be furious at Richard Burr. Uh, you cut out on that last word, so I don't know what you said. I'm ready for UNC Chapel Hill and um, every single other college located in North Carolina 
to just be <laughs> constantly in Richard Burr's mentions. <laughs> oh my God. It's not like you have the two schools that are far and away going to spend the most money on athletes fighting this every step of the way. I mean, come on. Well, what I'm saying is his constituents, Wait. his yeah, constituents, because not, not just like the kids that are going to like, you know, get uh, recruited from out of state, but also like the parents of kids who like, are mm-hmm. playing sports at those very sports prestigious universities like these are people in your district you stupid stupid son of a bitch right Ugh, fucking nuts like it's absolutely so, nuts. so dumb it's so fucking dumb i want to follow him just to see what he can come back with i want to go to his uh i'm going to go to his page and see what he says I want to be a fly on the wall on every single one of his dinners with his wife because I bet he is just a small, angry man. I am also an angry man, but I bet he's like that kind of where it's like, ah, oh, you fucked up this roast again, Martha. God damn it, you useless wench. And you go, whoa, Richard, Richard, it's just pot roast. It didn't even have salt on it. Like, let's calm down. That's what I, that's my imagination there. <laughs> you want to know something? So two things I've seen in the top five tweets so far. He introduced resolution to support Montagnard uh, tribesmen from Vietnam who were uh, very beneficial to U.S. special forces uh, in the Vietnam War, uh, which is the first time I've ever seen that being a thing. And that's really fucking cool because of how much I've read into uh, them themselves. Uh, Apparently... The funnier part is that he's chairman of the Senate Committee on Intelligence. So, oh, <laughs> so I did not notice that at first. Ooh. Holy shit. Also, Anthony Rendon just slapped a single uh, against the shift. Trey Turner scores as uh, Nationals have the lead. That's really fucking cool. I yeah. forgot to put the game on. I got you back. Uh, anything else you want to say about the NCAA before we do a really quick pivot to mm. baseball? I don't want to talk too much about baseball because. Again, the series will be over by the time we uh, this episode comes out, but I do want to just talk about Max Scherzer. Yeah, go for it. Um, so he threw pitches today. It's Tuesday, just again in case you forgot. He threw pitches. He couldn't lift. He couldn't get dressed two days ago. This is amazing. I really, like, we talked about it. I remember talking about it specifically on uh, our last show where I thought he Joe was Ross done was for. Yeah, 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 that's what you said. You said this is the end of his season, barring something I, miraculous. And the miraculous has happened. Max Scherzer me, is Jesus Christ. Let me ask you this: okay. If Max Scherzer pitches to any effect, um, in a game seven, and the Nationals win the game, whether because of him or not, do you think he wins World Series MVP? I don't, just because of the fact that he really hasn't been super sharp if he shuts down the astros and you know pitches starter minutes or starter minutes starter innings for the nationals and is just so good that he wins them a game seven then he's in the discussion uh what if it's, that what would if be it's really cool four innings of shutout baseball um is it a high like is it a high leverage four innings or is it like innings one through four Innings one through four. He comes in from injury. Um, they won his first start. Now he comes in against against Garrett Cole, throws four innings of shutout baseball to, at the very least, barring any run support, keep the uh, uh, Nationals in the fight here, so to speak. I would say that he would at least be in the conversation for that. I can't say you could just hand it to him off of that and his game one, you know, after his game one issues. I think that's fair. It'll definitely depend think, on what uh, the emotion is like that day. I still think if they do win outside of, you know, Strasburg being just crazy dominant tonight or, you know, the Scherzer miraculous occurring, I still think Juan Soto is the favorite for uh, Nationals mm-hmm. MVP if they win. Or maybe Kurt Suzuki. We'll see. He's hey, been hey, really only Hawaiian born player to ever hit a home run in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's my new uh, favorite do pack. It, do it for the memes, guys. Come on. I yeah I I just want Kurt Suzuki to be the first Hawaiian-born player to do everything. I want him to be the first Hawaiian-born player to visit South Dakota. I want, <laughs> I, want, 
<laughs> I oh, wanted... I love us. We are the best yeah. at what we do. Yeah. I want him to be the first Hawaiian board player to do literally everything. Oh, yeah. All right. Any, anything else for this episode, or, uh, or are you good? Like I said, uh, I think the last time we recorded, you know, nothing yet, but there will be in like 20 minutes. So we'll see. But I'm All good. Right. Well, if you want to uh, hit us up via Twitter, you can do so at JuicingPod. If you want to hit us up via email, you can do so at JuicingTheNumbers at gmail.com. And if you want to find show notes, you can do so at JuicingTheNumbers.Wixsite.com slash website or JuicingTheNumbers.com. Uh, drop us a, a review of some sort. We have a YouTube page. Just, just look us up on YouTube. We got it all, baby. Um, that being said... Uh, until Monday, y'all have a good one. Bye.